Today's sponsor of the video is Magic Spoon. If you want great tasting cereal that isn't bad for you, go to magicspoon.com slash dolphins and save $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon. Welcome into the Miami Dolphins today. I am your host, RC Maxfield, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am uh, filled with a lot of rage when it comes to the offense, particularly for two people, but before we get into these overreactions, don't hold back for me. Let me know down in the comments below your one word to describe the Dolphins' loss in week three. Are you irritated, frustrated, concerned? What is it? Let me know down in the comments. We have a lot of overreactions on this show, so you're going to be hearing a few choice words from me. But I want to know your one word to describe the Dolphins' loss in week three. Let's get right to those overreactions with the first one being, you got to bench Austin Jackson. Like, not now, but yesterday. You have to stop this man. He is a menace to society, mainly to the Dolphins' offensive line. He is absolutely awful on the left side of the line. Now, don't let that zero sack allowed fool you. That is not good because he leads the NFL and QB pressures allowed. He has been absolutely abysmal to start the season so far for the Miami Dolphins. And think about it. He leads the NFL in QB pressures allowed, and he's really only played in two games. You think about it. Look at these stats. He has QB hits of three, QB hurries 11, pressures 14. And then if you're a PFF guy, kind of like me when it comes to these offensive tackle grades, he is ninth in the NFL. And I mean worst, ninth worst in the NFL when it comes to pass blocking. My goodness, he is an absolute liability at left tackle for the Miami Dolphins. The worst part about it, he's not even the worst guy graded out when it comes to pass blocking for tackles on the Miami Dolphins offensive line. He's ninth. Jesse Davis is eighth. There's nowhere to go here. I mean, my goodness, Austin Jackson, I don't like calling a guy a bust this early on in his career. I really don't. But he has proven absolutely nothing to me through the first 16, 17 games or so that he's played in the NFL. He's been an absolute liability. And the worst part about it, I don't know where the Dolphins can go outside of a rookie second-round pick in Liam Eikenberg. I really don't know. But Jackson's got to get off the field. Brian Flores in his presser today said everybody's open for competition when it comes to the offensive line. Let me know down in the comments, though. Should the Dolphins bench Austin Jackson type Y for yes, type N for no? For me, I am spamming that Y button, but the problem is you could say the same thing for the guy opposite of him and Jesse Davis, and you could start Liam Eikenberg over there. It literally is being stuck between a rock and a hard place right now for the Miami Dolphins when it comes to this offensive line. There is no right answer, just wrong answers, and it is infuriating, especially when you had the 18th overall pick in just last year's draft looking like he's going to be a bust. Let me know down in the comments, though. Should the Dolphins bench Austin Jackson? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I better be seeing a lot of Ys down there. Today's sponsor of the video is Magic Spoon to get $5 off of your first order of Magic Spoon, go to magicspoon.com slash dolphins. If you want great tasting cereal that isn't bad for you, Magic Spoon's the place to go. 13 to 14 grams of protein. You got four grams of net carbs. And the best part about it, zero sugar. Listen, I am a big cereal guy in terms of I like to have two or three bowls late at night, big in those childhood, you know, favorite sugary cereals, but Magic Spoon has made me feel way less guilty about eating cereal late at night, and my girlfriend's judging me less too, and she's not, she's not hating on the results that Magic Spoon has happened in terms of the way that I'm looking physically, but Magic Spoon, again, $5 off at magicspoon.com slash dolphins, and listen, my favorite flavor right now, I'm in love with the cocoa, but this peanut butter flavor, I'll tell you what, it is growing on me heavily. MagicSpoon.com slash Dolphins. Get $5 off your first order of the best tasting cereal on the market. But the best part about it, it's good for you. And that's something that I don't take lightly in the sense that Magic Spoon is one of their, their really just pride themselves on, hey, we want to have a great product that is great tasting and good for you. They absolutely nail it. You got to give it a try. Go to MagicSpoon.com slash Dolphins to get $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon. And 
hey, I promise you won't regret it, mostly because there's so many flavors out there too. You can see the fruity right there. You can see the peanut butter, the cocoa. I promise there's one flavor you will love on there. And it, while you're at it, don't even stop getting one box. Get the pack of four, why don't you, and try a little bit of variety on there. Again, magicspoon.com slash dolphins to save $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon. Continuing with the overreactions from week three, Jacoby Brissett gives the Finns a better chance to win. And again, I know y'all love uh, going down in the comments and saying, RC, what the hell are you thinking? Uh, well, I think there's a lot of things I'm thinking here. And the Dolphins offense has been nothing short of abysmal. As y'all know, that's one of my favorite words to say. Um, and when I say this overreaction, don't hear what I'm not saying, right? I do think Tua is the better quarterback, but Brissett gives the Finns a better chance to win. I'm not even sure if I'm all the way in this. I, I don't think I'm there yet, but the key word is yet. Because what I saw yesterday was Jacoby Brissett throwing balls that I don't know if Tua Tonga Vailoa can make those throws. The main one that I'm thinking about, actually two, is that deep pass to Will Fuller that was blatant P.I. on Mullins in the end zone. And then you had that absolute dot to Mike Gesicki on fourth down to prolong the game where he was on the run, manipulating the pocket, stepping up, going to his left, had a, to do a jump throw, threw it over a Raiders defender right to the sideline to Mike Kosecki to prolong the game and get it to overtime. I think Jacoby Brissett is a career backup guy, right? I'm not saying that Jacoby Brissett is special or needs to be the starter long term, but for what's going on currently in this Dolphins offense that is struggling mightily, I do think Jacoby Brissett would be a better option than Tua for the simple fact that he allows you to go deeper down the field. He's got a bigger arm. He can take more hits, right? I want Tua to succeed in Miami long term. But right now, and it might be a blessing that he's on IR right now in the sense that you get two weeks to fully get him healthy and then bring him back, and maybe you can shuffle the offense around and make sure you protect that franchise QB and Tua Tungavailoa. But I do think Jacoby Brissett gives the Finns an absolute better chance currently as it stands right now, even if Tua was injured, to win games. But let me know down in the comments, how confident are you with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback? Scale it 1 to 10. I'm going to be honest, I'm probably in that 7.5 if you want to play the decimal game, which uh, probably isn't fair, but I'm going to do it anyway because you know what? I have a microphone and I'm the host of the show. I want to hear from you guys, though. How confident are you with Brissett at the starting quarterback position for the Miami Dolphins right now? Scale 1 to 10. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that big red button and subscribe to Miami Dolphins today. You got the link right there. We're giving you daily videos on your Miami Dolphins, and I get it. A one and two start is not what you wanted to the season, especially with Tua Tungavailoa out. But things could be worse. You could be the Jets, right? I mean, nobody wants to be the Jets. Zach Wilson, woof. My goodness, can't wait for that game. The deep, Xavier Howard might get 10 interceptions in that game alone. I mean, my goodness. And we'll keep you updated on the Dolphins all season long, better or worse. We're bringing you the latest news and rumors right here on Miami Dolphins today. All you got to do is hit that big red button. The next overreaction I have is uh, Godsey and Studsville's got to go. They, they, they got to go. I mean, I'm, I'm done with it at this point. This offense is just atrocious. Um, it's abysmal. I think the thing that really threw me off the most and just really wanted me to throw a chair through the TV, how the hell do you call a quick screen in your own end zone? Like, what logic goes behind that? With one of the worst offensive lines in football, a backup quarterback on the road, and you decide to throw a quick screen in the end zone, what the hell are you doing? Like, there, there's no justifying that. And there's no justifying these numbers for the Dolphins' offense through the first three weeks of the season. They've been nothing short of abysmal. You look at this. This is third worst in the league when it comes to points per game in the similar range for passing yards per game. Miles Gaskin can't get going because the offensive line is so dreadful. And then you only have four total touchdowns on the season. You're bad. And it's mostly because of Godsey and Studsville, how they just can't adjust. They're just not offensive coordinators. And the worst part about this is, in my opinion, the offense just doesn't have an identity. Simple and plain. What is this team? Is it a pass-first team? Is it a running team? What is it? You tell me. I, I can tell you what I think it is after the first three weeks. That's a three-and-out team. I mean, that's what they've done all year long so far, and they just can't seem to sustain drives long-term, except for what they did yesterday in the late part of the fourth quarter and into overtime. Outside of that, they're awful. They were awful 
And Las Vegas looked like they had a competent defense, which is saying something outside of a few players on Max Crosby and maybe Mullins in their secondary. You have to find an identity, and I just don't know if Godsey or Studsville will find that for you right now because you need it right now. The Dolphins are a win-now team, and your offense is the thing holding you back, specifically the play calling and the offensive line. But who do you blame in this situation if you're a Dolphins fan? Let me know down in the comments below. Type ES for Eric Studsville. If you're blaming Brian Flores, type BF. If you're uh, blaming, looks like Egg George there. My goodness, looks like he should be Humpty Dumpty on a wall right there. George Gotzi, type GG. If you have somebody else to blame, type O down in the comments. For me, it's hard not to blame Brian Flores right now just because there's got to be an adjustment from the head man himself, and he just hasn't made that, whether that's with the play caller and just going in there and saying, hey, you're going to be the main guy. This is what we need to do. He hasn't made that, so if you ask me, I'm probably typing BF down in the comments, but I want to hear from you guys. Who are you blaming for the stagnant and just pitiful Dolphins offense through the first three games of the season? Last overreaction I got is Mike Gusecki is better off with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. And listen, I think we have to throw week two out the window, right, when it comes down to it. The offense for the Dolphins was just terrible. You lose two on the second drive of the game. You're trying to figure everything out, and – the Bills play, had a hell of a game plan. But you look at what Mike Gusecki did yesterday. He had 12 targets, 10 receptions, 86 yards. Crazy part about it is he didn't lead the team in receptions. That was Jalen Waddell. And what Jacoby Brissett did yesterday was really hyper-target two guys, Mike Gusecki and Jalen Waddell. I love that from the Mike Gusecki point of view just because you need to hyper-target this guy. He is an anomaly when it comes to the tight end position. I'm not saying he's Travis Kelsey, but he plays like that. He might be a great value version of Travis Kelsey, which is perfectly fine. You'll take that any day of the week if you're the Miami Dolphins. You just have to get him involved. And I love the backup quarterback, Jacoby Brissett, coming in and saying, listen, I'm going to hyper-target two guys, Jalen Waddell, Mike Gusecki, arguably your best two playmakers on offense. And it worked for the most part in the sense that you left their defense on the field a little bit too long and the first three quarters were bad, but those last couple drives in the fourth quarter and overtime looked like a completely different offense because you were in the hurry-up scheme. And that's where Mike Gusecki did a lot of his damage. So I might agree that Mike Gusecki is better off with Brissett, but the real reason I'm going to do that is just because of the current O-line issues, right? You think about the O-line, I just mentioned it earlier, you have two of the you have the worst tackle combination in the NFL right now when it comes to pass blocking if you go to PFF. Let that sink in. I think it's something we know just watching the games, right? The tackles are bad. I think Jacoby Brissett is better for Mike Gusecki right now just because of those offensive line problems and what they present, right? You want a bigger quarterback there that can manipulate the pocket, isn't afraid to chunk it downfield on the 50-50 balls. And I'm not saying Tua won't do that. But I think Joby, Jacoby Brissett is in a better position to help propel Mike Gusecki back into that realm that we saw him have last year in terms of the breakout on the offensive side of the football for the Miami Dolphins. But type, back him up for me. If you uh, type uh, MG, if you think Mike Gusecki is back on track. I'm going to be honest with you. I do think he's back on track because I do think that they found some things late in that game. But it is infuriating that it took them that long into the season to figure something out. And maybe it was just because they were trying to get back in the game and over time they felt a little bit more risky since they were on the road. Godsey and Studsville have to get better at the coordinator's position. If they don't, they need to go. And I'm going to be honest, after the first three weeks of the season, I see no reason to keep them. Those are my two biggest overreactions. The offensive coordinators have to change, and Austin Jackson and Jesse Davis have to be benched. you got to find something, at least bench one of them, because right now the coordinators and the offensive line are holding the Miami Dolphins offense and the whole team back severely.